Ralph Avenue. We are blessed to see yet another Sunday. We are blessed to be yet alive. We are just simply blessed. To our pastor, Reverend June Anderson Dorsey, we thank the Lord for her guidance and her leadership. To all members of clergy, to all officers, to all members, period. I thank God for you. I thank God for blessing you. And I bless the name of the Lord for you. This morning, I ask that you turn with me to Daniel chapter three, and we will look at verses 16 through 18. And it reads as follows. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask that you be with us in the mist. We ask that you break every yoke, that you break every chain. God, do not allow your word to return void. Be with us in this moment. Have your way. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Man, this morning, let us use as a topic, faith despite the fire. In reading through some of my favorite passages in the Bible, I came across the story of the three Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Initially, when I first was introduced to this passage, I looked at it as an example of God's divine intervention. God coming in and saving those who held fast to their beliefs. Although this is true, I miss the bigger picture. Daniel 3, 16 and 18 is in actuality a testament of faith. What is faith? Faith is something that is of the utmost importance to us as believers. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is what we have been saved by through grace. Faith is what the just shall live by. Faith is what we walk by. Faith makes it possible to please God. Faith. Faith is an integral part of our relationship with God. Faith is important. It is in faith that we hold onto God's unchanging hand. It is in faith that we know God will work our situations out. It is in faith that we come to have a deeper and more intimate relationship with him. It's faith. And here in this portion of Daniel, we see faith despite the fire. Confronted with having to kneel before a false god, or be thrown into a fiery furnace, the three Hebrew men demonstrate what it means to have true faith. They are unapologetic, unbothered, and unyielding. Throughout their stay in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, the three men maintained their values and traditions. They didn't allow themselves to be defiled by the king's meat or drink. They didn't allow their identities to become lost in the culture that surrounded them. They didn't allow their love of God to diminish despite what others around them were doing. The Hebrew men had a conviction about themselves and their faith. In a world filled with temptation and distractions, being able to remain convicted and faithful is imperative for our spiritual and physical survival. Looking at the Hebrew men's situation, one may question how it is even possible to keep faith in the midst of everything going on. Living in foreign lands, surrounded by other worldly customs and traditions, a long ways from home, how does one remain faithful? The men were reminded of the things God had already done for them and their people. The men remembered the stories of God delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt. 
They remembered how God had rescued their people from various foes. They remembered how their people told them about how God had provided manna from heaven. They remembered how God promised that they were his people and he was their God. They remembered and in the midst of their remembrance, their faith was further solidified. If God was there for them, surely God will be here for me. If God came through before, surely he will come through again. If God performed miracles in the past, surely he's still in the miracle performing business. See, they remembered who they were dealing with and who was dealing with them. Their, their faith suddenly became solidified. When you remember what God has already done for you, when you remember the times God has come through for you, when you remember how God has made a way time after time, your faith is solidified. And when your faith is solid, you become unapologetic. To be unapologetic means to show no regret or care. That's what I like about the Hebrew men. They remembered whose they were and realized that they didn't owe anyone anything. It's right there in verse 16. When confronted by the king, the Hebrew men didn't even dignify him with a response. When you are a child of the king, you don't owe anyone any explanation, any reasoning, any excuse, or any thought. When you're a child of the king, it doesn't matter who comes at you with any man-given authority. You walk in what God has ordained for you. You don't owe anyone an explanation for the conviction of your faith. You don't have to defend yourself against someone who thinks they have control over you. Be unapologetic in your faith. Be unapologetic in your conviction. Be unapologetic in the face of your enemies. God's got you and he will not let you fall. The three Hebrew men held such conviction in their faith that they were not only unapologetic in their stance against the king, they were also unbothered. The conviction of their faith led them to have a boost of confidence in their proclamation. When speaking to the king, their choice of wording is very telling. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. Uh, that, that statement is loaded and powerful. Can we, can we break it down? If our God, that shows relationship. They knew they belonged to God. They knew they were the children of God. They knew that they had a relationship with God and that relationship came with benefits. God is going to protect his children. God is going to be there when his children call. Having a relationship with God gives you the benefit of his grace, mercy, love, and steadfastness. Whom we serve, that shows honor and reverence. They were publicly stating that it is God whom they serve, not the king, not any golden idols, not any other man on earth. It is God is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand. This shows an understanding of God's power over situations and circumstances. God is all powerful. Nothing can stand in his way. Nothing is out of his control. Nothing can get in his way. Not a furnace, a blazing fire, nor an overbearing king. God is all powerful. Let him deliver us. This is where the confidence really kicks in. When we go up against our enemies, we need to make sure that we remind them of the relationship that we have with God, that we remind them of who we honor and serve, that we remind them of God's power and that we say it with confidence. You have to be unbothered when the enemy comes at you sideways. You, you have to be confident in how you talk to the enemy. If my God, whom I serve, is able to deliver me from sickness, from heartache, from pain, from violence, from devastation, from traps, from snares, from cancer, from divorce, from eviction, from whatever is thrown in my way, let 
him deliver me. Let him come through. Let him have his way. Let him show up and start showing out. I am unbothered by the weapons that are formed. I am unbothered by the traps and the snare. I am unbothered by the conspiracies against me. I am unbothered by the furnace. You've got to remind the enemy that you are unbothered by the talking and the whispering and the distractions. You are unbothered. Why? Because the conviction of our faith reassures us that God can and God will. Your conviction of faith will not only make you unapologetic and unbothered, it will also make you unyielding. The faith of the Hebrew men was so strong that even if God didn't show up and deliver them from the furnace, they still wouldn't change their minds and bow to the golden idol. They had faith despite the fire. They had faith that God wouldn't leave or forsake them. They had faith that even if the situation didn't turn out how they wanted, they would still serve God. That's faith despite the fire. This morning, I encourage you to have faith despite the fire. Have faith despite what is being thrown at you. Have faith despite the fire. Have faith despite how hopeless the situation may seem. Have faith despite the fire. Have faith despite everything going on around you. Have faith despite the fire. Have faith despite the pain in your body. Have faith despite the fire. Because when you have faith despite the fire, God will show up. God will come through. God will deliver. God will turn your situation around and put you in a state of protection. God will prove to your enemies that he is God and God all by himself. Have faith despite the fire. Because even if God doesn't show up, I'll praise him anyhow. Even if God doesn't deliver me from the fiery furnace, I still won't serve any other God but him. Even if the enemy sets traps for me, I still will praise God despite my circumstances because I have faith despite the fire. My brothers and my sisters, we are living in trying times. We are living in a world where children are gunned down while waiting for the bus. We are living in a world where our people are being abducted and coming up missing. We are living in a world where a virus is running rampant. We are living in a world that is a fiery furnace, but we can have faith despite the fire and God can and God will show up. God bless you, God keep you, and may his loving face always shine upon you.